This story swirl is brought to you by the Bangor Historical Society, promoting Bangor's history since 1864. Pearl Harbor. Japan, like its infamous Axis partners, struck first and declared war afterwards. Everyone knows the events that transpired. But not many people know that prior to Pearl Harbor and World War II, America's worst naval defeat took place along the winding rivers and rocky coasts of Maine. This is the story of the Penobscot Expedition, the naval disaster you've never heard of. It's 1779, and the revolution is in its fourth year. Early victories like Saratoga have bolstered the colonists' resolve, but the war has entered a stalemate. The British, desperate to regain control, have resorted to occupying major cities like Philadelphia. Yet a battle far from the front lines threatens the young nation's movement for independence. Maine, as we know, was part of Massachusetts, and Massachusetts was taking care of everything in this region. The British see a strategic opportunity in Maine's vast wilderness and rich resources. They really wanted to outfit their navy, which was the greatest in the world for many more years to come, with the timber and the lumber that would continue these warships and continue this drastic empire. They wanted our lumber fields. It's a chance to both threaten vital trade routes for the rebellious colonies and provide a haven for colonists loyal to the crown. They envision a new colony called New Ireland, a stronghold that could turn the tide of the war. In June of 1779, a British expeditionary force under the command of Francis McLean makes landfall in the port town of Castine. There's a high bluff area, so you have a great view of the surrounding area. You have the fresh water of the Penobscot River and the Bagaduce River, which is on the other side of the peninsula. And there was only three sloops of war that were stationed in this location. With orders to fortify their position, they quickly begin construction of Fort George. This audacious move sets the stage for a clash with rebellious Massachusetts, as both sides fight to control the region. Uh, Massachusetts would stop this, or want to stop it at all costs, and they would get this fleet, this armada, the expedition as we call it, to uh, start to sail from Boston, gathering ships and more militiamen at the time because we were about to start to build our navy. Massachusetts embarks on its most ambitious naval undertaking of the Revolution. 19 warships, 24 support vessels, and over 1,000 soldiers. Massachusetts didn't put anybody in overall command. They had Dudley Saltonstall, who was a Commodore. Uh, he was in charge of the Navy. Solomon Lovell was a general, and he was in charge of the Army. He would oversee the land aspects of this. Paul Revere, who was actually uh, so well known from the Midnight Ride fame, he was a colonel in charge of artillery for this event and definitely left uh, an impact. Their mission clear expel the British from the port town of Castine and prevent the colony of New Ireland from taking root. The American flotilla arrives off the coast of Castine on July 25th, but a discord festers within leadership. Commodore Saltonstall, ever conscious of the powerful British warships in the harbor, favors caution and hopes to protect his precious fleet from destruction. General Lovell, on the other hand, is eager for swift, decisive action. It would be one of those, oh, the army would move into this location once the Navy moves their ships this way, but oh, that can't happen until the army and back and forth and back and forth. Though small skirmishes would take place, time slips away. Allowing the British to send word of the flotilla's arrival and position to New York City. Some of the other officers were being like, hey, we need to do something, hey, we need to do this. And then what finally was there, they had a couple of different plans and then they finally decided on this plan to essentially attack the fort from the rear, have the troops climb the cliff side of the peninsula. And as they were doing this and moving the troops into location, that's when those relief forces would enter the harbor. Facing certain defeat, the Americans retreat and a chaotic escape up the Penobscot River. You saw those British relief forces. Those were big ships. They were drastically outgunning anything that we had. You knew that you were outgunned. You were outmanned and you were outtrained. Commodore Saltonstall orders his fleet up the treacherous Penobscot River, hoping to find safety in its narrow channels. This tactical misstep proves fatal. To see the frantic withdrawal of all of the colonial troops that had made it, it would have been a lot of big ships and a lot of cannon in Penobscot Bay. The British ships, superior in maneuverability, pursue relentlessly. Sailing up the Penobscot is not an easy task. 
some of the readings and some of the opinions that you see, they talk about trying to get up to this point here in Bangor at the head of the tide so that they could set a defense. Trapped and outgunned, American captains take the agonizing decision to scuttle their own ships, setting them ablaze to deny the British their prizes. You would have had ships that had been already burnt, so you would have had the smoke coming, kind of following up along the river. You would still have had these ships with people throwing stuff overboard, just trying to go. It would not have been a pretty picture. When the battle concludes, Massachusetts has lost. Nearly 40 ships of the flotilla are either scuttled or destroyed in the battle. There would be a lot of pointing of fingers, a lot of placing of the blame. There would be numerous court-martials. The most notable would be Saltonstall and Paul Revere. During that fighting in the evacuation up the Penobscot, Revere disobeyed orders that were given to him by Peleg Wadsworth. He would eventually be brought up on these charges for essentially uh, dereliction of duty. Who was the harbinger of this court-martial? None other than the grandfather of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Placing the blame on the Penobscot expedition is extremely difficult because we look back on it now in hindsight's 2020, bad leadership, ill-trained militia. Ultimately, they placed the blame on Saltonstall, who would never really captain again. Though historically significant, the Penobscot expedition fades into obscurity. It serves as a stark reminder of the internal struggles and missteps that plagued the American Revolution. There are objects that you can see. Uh, you don't have to go into a museum for. If you walk along the uh, Penobscot in downtown Bangor, you're gonna see a bunch of numerous cannons that have been taken up from this event. Here in the Historical Society, we do have one of the cannons that belonged to Paul Revere. The Historical Society, we're uh, open seasonally. Best way to find us is to shoot us an email, bangorhistoricalsociety.org. Find us on Facebook, we're on Instagram. And if you're interested, definitely think about becoming a member and donate. If you'd like to continue seeing story strolls, follow us on all of your favorite social media outlets. Stories on the go, wherever you stroll. Story stroll.